Hello everybody, my name is FireClaimer and welcome back to Minecraft. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you some more things that I have invented here in my creative world, and the first of which is crawling in vanilla Minecraft. Now, a video by SquirtDude is on YouTube that shows the exact same thing, but I have made a simplified version that doesn't require fancy spawners or teleport commands to work, although you could use them in different situations. So how it works is you just go into this hole here, and as you can see, you'd think I would have landed on that block, but nope. Uh, as you can see, I'm crawling, technically, through this one wide gap, and then just jump out through the other end, and you can still see it was one wide. There are no fanciness, there are no fancy hidden things here, except for one. Now, in Minecraft, every single block has a specific ID. For example, stone is one, grass is two, and many different blocks have many different values. And if you use the give command, you can do different things with them. But there are some ID or blocks that have an ID that you cannot get through give. For example, if I say give me 36, it will not work, even though there is an item with but technically a block with the ID of 36. So if I say set block at my current coordinates, 36, it will say later when numeric IDs are not uh, supported, it will say piston extension. Now, this is a save block that will save the place for a piston when it is extending. Now, I these are very glitchy when not used when it is actually with a piston. So if I say summon falling sand a little bit below me, and then I give it a uh, tile ID of, say, 1, and then time of uh, 1 also, and I summon it. It will fall, and even though normally when a falling sand block lands, it becomes a regular block, this does not. It becomes a ghost block, and this is how I have done it. Basically, I just set blocked, did the set block command of the piston extension, block 36, in a row, and then I just summoned the falling sand in repeated order to make it look like you were crawling through a one wide gap, even though you were technically just walking through a ghost block. Now, I bet a lot of you um, had thought, hey, in a recent video by Simply Sark on YouTube, he showed how uh, perpetual falling sand can be manipulated by using creepers and uh, creepers and flint and steel to basically knock it around like a soccer ball, even though that was only a graphical glitch. Unfortunately, you cannot do that with this, even though that really had no point anyway. So, if I come over here, and I place down a creeper, and then light him, the block gets very glitchy, depending on the distant, the area that you had knocked it from. And it starts to slowly creep in random areas, but if I just blow it back again with the creeper, it knocks over to the other side and it becomes a solid block because it finally landed through the piston extension. Even though the piston extension looks like it extends in both, both blocks by the hitbox, if I move over here, you cannot see that. So, that is what makes it to where it doesn't totally, oops, to where it doesn't totally work in all situations, even though it's not like you would really be using this with explosions nearby. So I set technically I set the block here even though the hitbox is extending into both blocks it does not really exist here. So if I just did another set block it will do the same thing and yet again and yet again but then if I come to the dead center and then I do the summon falling sand and the summon falling sand and the summon falling sand repeatedly as you can see, I can walk through these blocks, even though they are all technically ghosts. And then a creeper will blow them all glitchy. And this was the only one that fully set, because it was right next to it. And all the other ones have become awkward ghost movie blocks. But they are kind of fun to play with. As you can see, these ones snapped into place, even though this one is still glitching out. It can be fun to play with for a little, but... 
they will all eventually, if blown off, revert back to their original forms. And the piston extension in survival cannot actually be broken. No matter how many times you punch it or for how long, they become basically unbreakable. But obviously, in creative mode, since everything is instant break, you can break it. And it will give off a little wooden particle. That's because pistons are made of wood. But yeah, that is very simply how to crawl in vanilla Minecraft. So, on to the next thing. It is right-clickable power-ups. And as you can see here, it says right-click the block for a power-up. And they're not just regular power-ups. They are randomized. So I click this. And as you can see, I have speed 3 for an indefinite amount of time. So I can run around as much as I want for as long as I want. And I'm, I have speed 3. That's pretty much it. And it is very random. It is randomized to where you can either have it for 5 seconds to 60 seconds, I believe. I'm not sure. So, since it's not wearing off immediately, I'll show you how it works. It obviously uses a butt switch. I seem to be using those a lot lately. And then it is wired to a T flip-flop with two command blocks. This just gives me speed 2, even though it's technically 3, for 60,000 seconds, which the game just defaults to indefinitely. And it is powered by this. And then when um, the redstone ore block is done reacting, it will re-update, and then it will come over here, which will clear speed from me. So, for those who don't know, um, redstone ore is a very... Oh, there we go. It just reverted, and it just took the speed away from me. So, redstone ore is an awkward block. If you touch it, it will start... To, what? Huh. Oh, there we go. Uh, if you touch it sometimes, it will start to sparkle and, like, make particles. This can be detected by a butt switch, um, and when you right-click it, it will obviously react. So I use that in the butt switch to where you right-click the block, and it will give you the power-up. And it has a random cooldown time to where I could right-click all three of these, and they would all become active, and they would uh, not uh, all revert in order. They may revert in random orders after a long period of time. So that is how those work. Then it's just wired to a T flip-flop. Um, now, the bud switch isn't exactly how you would say silent, but it gets the job done, and it makes it to where you can randomly click on the redstone block, and it will give you, say, speed, or resistance, or strength for however long, and then when it is done reacting, it will retract. And this can also be used in detecting traps, to where, say, I got all of the necessary items in a in one of these. Uh, I could just make it, and then let me just make the bud switch here. Place the two pistons opposite from each other. Oops, wrong block. There we go. So, A, it will pulse when I do that, but if I walk over it, it will react also. But it will not if you shift and sneak across it. As you can see, then the moment I start walking, it will react. You can basically do that for sneaking traps to where you have to sneak to get through, or else it will become detected and you can place carpet on top to make it seem less obvious. But yes, that is everything that I have done here today in my creative world, so next time on Minecraft, I will actually be showing off this right here, which I, had, I would have done in this video, but I had no time. But yeah, I will see you guys later.